Hey everybody, welcome. We're at MedicineNet College and this is the 2020 ACAC Women's Volleyball Championships. Uh, and uh, we're in for an exciting weekend. We've got some tremendous teams, some amazing student athletes, and uh, some wonderful coaches as well. And so we'd like to introduce them to you over the next little bit. And we've got a few questions for them as well, of course, as we get excited for this uh, weekend of amazing volleyball. And so we'll start at the end. I will introduce uh, all of the coaches we have here today. Uh, we've got uh, Talbot Walton. We've got uh, Nolan Winemaster. Uh, from Briarcrest, we've got Bench Hendricks from Nate. We've got uh, Grace Scott from King's College. We've got uh, Kim Stonehouse from here in Medicine Hat College. Uh, Austin Dyer from Lakeland. Steve Enright from Augustana. And to my right, we've got Colin Kubinek from Ambrose. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Coach Kim Stonehouse from Medicine Hat College. Kim, um, how about you share a few words uh, welcoming some of the other coaches and what it means to Medicine Hat College to, to be uh, hosting this event this weekend? Yeah, I think welcome everybody. We're really excited to have the best in the ACAC here this weekend. And, you know, for us, it's really exciting to play in front of our home crowd in the Snake Pit and in front of our wonderful fans. So I know we're really excited, as well as you know, the empowerment of women in sport. I think that's another important thing to remember that's also going on during this uh, Provincials. Kim, can you talk a little bit about the uh, season so far for your team and uh, maybe some of the struggles and how they've managed to overcome and, uh, and hopefully, you know, be ready for this weekend? Yeah, I mean, we had, a, we had a strong start to the first half of the season. We had some injuries and some sickness take us in the second half. So a lot of um, mental challenges there for us, but I think we're ready and we've reset uh, mentally and we're prepared to, to come out strong in front of our home crowd. A little bit about your volleyball history, uh, not just as a coach, but as a player as well. Oh, as a player, um, you want me to go and sure. talk about my, <laughs> right from the beginning. Well, go ahead and brag <laughs> a little bit, it's all good. Uh, well, I'm born and raised in, in Medicine Hat, and after I graduated from McCoy High School, I went to Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana, where I redshirted my first year and played my last four years there, and uh, I mean, that was a great experience, and I definitely, brought some of that experience as a player at that level to um, coaching and hopefully can share some of that with my athletes. So um, yeah, what else do you want to know? What are some of the qualities that you think you bring as a coach and how might you differ from maybe some of the others at the table here? Oh, geez, put me on the spot. Um, you know, there are, there are a lot of challenges being a student athlete and I can't, I don't know for sure who was a student athlete or not, but I, I definitely use that as, um, a way to teach my student athletes and, and use some of the experiences. I mean, I've been there, done that, and I try to share that with them. I understand the struggles, um, whether that be as an athlete, having to juggle practice, um, travel, the academic side of it, and really drive home how important it is to be a student first. And that's, you know, my job as a coach is to make sure they get an education because that's the importance that was, was um, when I was a student athlete, that was really important at the university that I was at. So um, I played against some national, U.S. national players and some Canadian national players. So um, I guess just sharing those experiences that I uh, on the court as a player, and hopefully being able to um, help my student athletes as they're, they're experiencing those same challenges that I would have as an athlete. Now, Coach, your, your team might not be favored to win this weekend, but what has been your message to them going into this tournament? We just got to believe. That's it. Yeah. No, I, I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. That's, um, that's what we've kind of driven home this, this week. And I don't think anybody takes anyone for, for granted or, or thinks anyone's not going to come and compete this weekend. It's provincials. It's, it's not league. We don't see each other a lot. So we're out there and it's, it's new for both of us. So I'm sure that a, a bunch of the coaches are telling their athletes the same thing. All right. Do you have a healthy squad going into the weekend? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's go down to Talbot then. If we could uh, pass the mic down there and... Uh... <clears throat> All right, Talbot, for those watching at home, uh, could you tell everyone uh, the school you're from and uh, a little bit about uh, your coaching uh, volleyball history? Hi, my name is Talbot Walton, women's volleyball coach from Red Deer College. 
Uh, my playing history started a long, long time ago, um, probably back in about grade six, I think. Uh, went through high school in Lacombe, moved on to Redger College for two years, and then on to the University of Alberta for my remaining three seasons. You've got a, a tremendous new, uh, beautiful volleyball facility there. What has that meant to the uh, program at Medicine Hat College? Or sorry, at Red Deer College. It definitely meant a lot when you come and look at the city of Red Deer, for example. Uh, we, I think we had maybe the fourth or fifth nicest gym in the city behind all the high schools. So for <laughs> us to upgrade and, and get that facility as part of the Canada Games was, was a pretty special thing. I don't think we would have gotten it had we not been the host city for the Canada Games. And uh, it really has changed the atmosphere. Our old gym was... Um, maybe held about 400 people total and it always had a, a very positive atmosphere for the hometown team and I think opponents found it sometimes difficult to play in it. The new facility has three times as many seating capacity in there. Uh, we haven't quite sold it out yet for a league game but we hosted men's nationals last year and we had 1400 plus people in there watching so it really has driven up the exposure of volleyball in central Alberta and it's really given us a showcase facility to for training purposes not only for the college but also for uh, high schools and our club teams as well. Who are some of your uh, key players that uh, fans are definitely going to want to keep an eye on this weekend? Uh, we, I'm really happy with the progress of my entire group my first year back here and, and uh, I think we've shown that in the first half and even a part of the second half, we rotated through a majority of our lineup. Um, I think a large percentage of people got in quite frequently. And, and it has been a little bit of a, not a necessary revolving door from the negative aspect, but from the capacity to put different players in different roles. And um, we obviously have some strength in our, I think in our libero position in Kaylee Domini. And, and uh, our right side player, Emma Holmes, has had a, a really solid season as well. Excellent. Thank you, Talbot. Uh, moving on to uh, Nolan from Briarcrest. Uh, Nolan, how about you uh, introduce yourself to uh, those viewers that are watching and uh, a little bit about your volleyball, your coaching uh, history at Briarcrest. Sure. Yeah, I'm Nolan Mymaster and uh, coach at Briarcrest College in Cairnport, Saskatchewan. Uh, yeah, so I've been coaching there uh, 14 years now, I think. Started in May 2006, and uh, yeah, I was a student athlete at Briarcrest as well. Before that, um, yeah, uh, playing for the men's program there. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, this is season 13, um, about 14 years at the job, so. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, and, and I know for the rest of the uh, coaches probably here at this table, they might look at the Briarcrest program and they might think, I mean, so many great things, but that travel schedule must be a killer. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you managed to overcome that? Uh, well, I uh, probably should ask my wife that question, actually. Um, if she was here, she'd probably have another opinion on it, but um, killer is maybe a good word, actually. Um, uh, no, I, I mean, it feels normal, I guess, at this point. Uh, for me, I have probably could do the drive with my eyes closed down the number one. Uh, but we, yeah, I mean, we just expect it, I guess, and we, we do manage it in other ways. Uh, you know, obviously it means uh, less training days for us. Uh, we travel a lot on Thursdays, um, and so we miss out on some training, but I think it also, yeah, helps us uh, stay a little bit uh, fresher as the season goes on uh, with a couple less practice days uh, here and there too. So, um, yeah, it has its uh, it has its benefits too, for sure. That we we want to emphasize, and uh, team building is definitely one of those things. You get to spend a lot of time together on the road, um, and it definitely helps us with that, for sure. Thank you. Uh, looking back on the season so far, has there been a, a major emotional win on the court, or any uh, any uh, particular opponent this season that defeating them just really brought the team together in a in a in a great way? Um, well, we had some good battles here with Red Deer actually a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, that was a little bit more significant match in the standings uh, with both teams. Um, yeah, uh, pushing for that first place spot. And um, we, we had our first loss of the season on the Friday night. Uh, so it was really cool to see the girls respond to that and to that challenge. Um, really good learning opportunity against uh, a really good team, obviously. And um, yeah, it was cool just to see uh, our girls respond on Saturday 
uh, especially after a tough first set um, and Red Deer playing really well that we, yeah, we uh, uh, managed to, to battle back and take the match on, on Saturday. And I'd say that was probably our most significant uh, win of the season. So It sounds good. Who are some of the key players on your team that uh, have really come through big for you? Yeah, I mean, we're blessed to have uh, a great leadership team of uh, three fifth years uh, on the court for us this year. Uh, we had four fifth years going into the season, but one of them uh, broke her ankle in the in the season opener. Uh, unfortunately, she's been out all year. But um, yeah, the other three have just, I mean, been tremendous leaders for us. So our setter, Ashley Erickson, and she's our floor captain. And uh, and then our, our P1, uh, Rebecca Garner, has had a pretty uh, outstanding season again as well, points scoring wise. Uh, she leads the league in, in points per game. And, uh, and then uh, our fifth year libero, Kirsty Kinderchuk, is just, uh, yeah, absolute rock for us on passing and defense. So I would say those three kind of all equally uh, carry the biggest load for us. All right, thank you. Once again, uh, Nolan Mine, uh, Winemaster from Briarcrest. Moving on, we've got Bench Hendricks uh, joining us from Nate. Bench, uh, this must be kind of interesting, almost kind of full circle for you as a former coach here. Yeah, no, it's fun fun to be back. Uh, was here for 15 years and now I'm in my seventh year at Nate. So. Was that 22 years in the ACAC? <laughs> I think I'm the oldest uh, that, in that regard now in the in the ACAC. So been around for a while. You've kind of made volleyball your life then, obviously, for the past uh, few decades. Uh, t a little bit about your uh, playing career and then how you segued into coaching. Yeah, I uh, played uh, two years at Red Deer College, one with Talbot actually, way back when, and uh, then I played at U of C for three years and. Played three years with Team Canada and a year professionally in France, and then uh, started coaching here. So there was no, no to just straight in from playing to coaching, and that's kind of what I've been doing um, for 40, I don't know, 47 years, just about. Yeah. So. Uh, so what are some of the things you like to do to get your team mentally prepared for this weekend? Well, I, I just think that that's a progression from from day one. Um, uh, just figuring out how to clear your mind. And, focus on the on the cues that matter uh, volleyball is a unique game because uh, it's either a mistake or it's something good and there's not much in between and uh, you can't adjust the ball shanks off your arms and everyone knows that that was your fault and so mental toughness is really important to be able to let that go and not worry about what you just did but what you got to do next so um, I, that's something that we just try to work on every day and you know I think Austin was mentioned earlier you can't replicate the pressure of playoffs without being there so you, you just get them prepared as as you can and then uh, just hopefully they let her rip when it's time all right sounds good thank you bench once again bench Hendricks from nate uh let's go down to grace grace if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself a little bit about you and your volleyball uh, career sure my name's grace scott i coach at the king's university in edmonton and uh have Loved sports all my life, loved uh, teaching sports and coaching. So I remember teaching skating when I was in grade seven, something like that. So I uh, have been coaching quite some time and uh, coaching about 12 years at King's University. Sounds good. A uh, little bit about your team this year and, uh, you know, some of the key components of this team that are probably responsible for you being here this weekend. Um, past few years, we've we've had a a really good team, lots of depth, amazing character of girls on our team. So much fun to coach. And uh, they, you know, I can have a bad day, just whatever, at work and walk into the gym and uh, they just uh, pick, pick up my spirits, make me laugh a lot. So that's always good. Um, but just seeing uh, the program build and having had some good athletes in the past few years and some of them have moved on to youth sport, which has opened the door for a few of our players who were good players, but they actually uh, didn't get that many opportunities to play in the past couple of years. So this year they're on the floor and they're doing really well. Uh, Lauren Croach and uh, Kristen Shannon are, are two of those players who have played behind some other good players, but this year they're, they're both doing really well. And uh, what's the excitement level on the team just being here in Southern Alberta? They don't get to come here during the season. Uh, what, what's, what's the mindset with the team like right now? 
yeah, it's, it's a great travel experience. Some of them have never been to Medicine Hat, so that's exciting for them. And uh, it's always nice to get to see other schools in our conference and uh, just appreciate being with other teams and the experience that those institutions provide. So they're definitely excited to be at playoffs. And as Kim said, it's just, you know, everybody shows up for playoffs. There are no easy games. And so they're, they're going into the weekend knowing it's, it's going to be a fight and it's going to be a lot of fun. Sounds good. All right. Once again, that's Grace Scott from King's University. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on, let's, uh, let's talk to uh, Austin Dyer from Lakeland. Austin, a uh, little bit about yourself and uh, your coaching career. Yeah, so I'm Austin Dyer. I'm the head coach at Lakeland College in uh, Lloydminster. Uh, it's the border city, so the college is in Alberta, but uh, we have half our city in Saskatchewan as well. Um, I've been at Lakeland for, this would be 12 years that I've uh, been, been running the program there. Uh, my uh, my Playing and coaching background is uh, is kind of an interesting one. I uh, I grew up my whole life loving sports, and my dad was a teacher. And so uh, when I was in uh, getting into high school, everything I was geared around was I was trying to coach. So my dad was uh, was the principal, and uh, he coached everything uh, in the school as well. So I would always just go out and help him with uh, with whatever teams he was coaching. And uh, as I you know went to to university, I decided I wanted to be a teacher so that I could coach. I didn't really realize that you could have a career in coaching because in Canada, that's not uh, not something that uh, happens very often. And so then, when I was in university, um, when I got there, um, after my first year of university, I played junior Huskies because uh, at that time teams ran junior programs, and realized very quickly that I was not at that level as a player. And so everything uh, was then dedicated to coaching. And so I started uh, working with uh, the women's volleyball team at the U of S, um, and uh, I was the assistant coach there for five years. Um, but with that. Um, which is a little bit unique because of my size. I'm, I'm not very tall, uh, but I could, I could jump pretty well and I had a pretty good arm. So I actually was a player coach for those five years. Um, and so even though I didn't play post-secondary men's volleyball, I actually uh, practiced every single day against our women's team. Um, and so I got to, I got to learn, uh, learn on the job uh, as I was basically a player with, with uh, the head coach and then we would debrief everything afterwards. And so it was a really cool way for me to be able to learn how to coach through playing. Um, I actually got to play in a couple feature matches as well as we had we had some injuries and so some exhibition stuff where where I started for our team we went on a, a volleyball tour to Japan um, and we were going there with two middles and one of them broke her wrist right before the trip and so I started in all of the matches against the Japanese teams while, while we while we were there um, and so you know, it's it's kind of finicky and, and, and funny, but for me, that that learning experience it was it was unbelievable because I played every position um, that uh, that was needed. So I got to learn uh, by playing. Um, yes, I was playing against women, but uh, it was it, it was a pretty cool experience that way. Um, and then that segue segued me to Lakeland, um, where I've now been for 12 years. Uh, what's um, coming from one of the smaller schools represented at the uh, table here? What are what are some of the um what are some of the uh, attributes at Lakeland that, uh, you know, when, when you're recruiting players, how do you sell them on, on your school? What are some of the benefits of your uh, particular school? Yeah, you know, the biggest thing for me is I just got to get the players to come for a visit. Um, as soon as they get there, um, they usually don't want to leave and, it, you know, it feels like home for them. Um, typically, I try my best to recruit you know, small town type kids, um, as we're we're a very small institution, um, and so class sizes are small. Um, it's, a it's a very homey, um, style of school um, as well basically all of our athletes are recruited in and live in residence together and and so you know again transitioning from a small town to post-secondary can be tough going to a big city and so you know we try to promote that that you know we're a really good option uh, to make that transition um, from from high school to post-secondary sounds good and how excited are your student athletes to be here this weekend yeah, you know, we, we got a real mix, uh, mix on our team as we got, uh, we're divided in half. We have a bunch of old players and then we have a whole bunch of babies on our team as well. And so our starting lineup is divided that way too, where we got a bunch of old players and then some rookies that are all starting. And so, uh, you know, there, it's different energy. The old players are pumped because they, you know, they know what the competition's like in this tournament and the young kids are just ecstatic to be able to play in the tournament. And so uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what our energy looks like once we get going. All right. Uh, once again, that's uh, Austin Dyer from Lakeland. Moving on from Augustana, Steve Enright. Uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, coaching and volleyball uh, background. Yeah, I guess uh, 
there's a lot of great, really good athletes at this table, former athletes, and uh, I guess I was a bit of a, a multi-sport athlete type of guy. Uh, wasn't particularly good at volleyball, uh, really, at any point in my life, but uh, I knew I loved sport, and uh, so I, I'm a bit of a grinder in the coaching scene. I started coaching high school volleyball when I was 19 and coached all the way through my university years. And uh, about five years ago, I poked my head in the door at Augustana. And a little bit like Austin's story, they kind of let me be a player coach and use me at their whim and, uh, for a few years. And then uh, a great opportunity came about. Uh, the head coach uh, at the time was uh, Greg Ryan, who's had a wonderful career coaching in Canada. And he kind of took me under his wing. And so I was just really fortunate, and just not with Greg, but with a whole bunch of coaches that uh, really helped me, help mentor me. Uh, to this stage, so this is actually my first year's head coach here at Augustana. Um, but yeah, just fortunate in that regard. Steve, all, all teams have high points and low points during the season. What has been your low point and how did you manage to overcome that? Yeah, that's uh, our low point, I'd say, was it, it happened. It was the best thing that could have happened to us, and it happened fairly early. It was when Austin's Lakelands, Lakelands team came and swept us early in the season. We had pretty high goals uh, to begin the season. And we got humbled by, well, Kings early and, and Lakeland. And so we just had to kind of readjust and kind of change the narrative on our team a little bit after that fact. And instead of, uh, I guess, hiding from tough stuff, we decided to, uh, we call it embrace the suck or really lean into the hard things of the season. And don't, don't hide those things and just, uh, you know, have those conversations that we need to have. And so we took a lot from those losses. Um, and sin since then, it's been pretty successful. We're on a we're on a heater right now, a 16-game winning streak since, since Austin kind of put us in our spot there early. <laughs> good, good, good. And uh, how, uh, how are the girls looking forward to this weekend? They must be pretty excited then. Yeah, like I said, we don't hide away from the conversation. We have, we have big aspirations this, uh, this year. Um, we know the competition's going to be tough. We've heard all about the snake pit. Um, we, we, you know, we, draw, we drew the host here in the first match, and we think we might be playing against seven players and not six out there with the snake pit. Uh, which is which is going to be an awesome experience, and again, we're going to lean into that. Um, fortunately for us, we have some of the best fans uh, in the north as well, so we, we're kind of used to playing in, in some crazy environments. All right, sounds good. Once again, Steve Enright from Augustana, and finally, Colin Kubinek from Ambrose joining us. Uh, Colin, a little bit about your uh, coaching and uh, and uh, playing background, if you uh, have any. I'm sure you do. Sure. Um, yeah, I, uh, I grew up in a house of Zed teachers, like a couple here, and so I grew up kind of multi-sport. I actually grew up in the house of a basketball dad, and I was a bit of a black sheep to choose volleyball. Um, didn't play club volleyball in high school, but played all the sports. Um, and then I went off to Briarcrest, and actually my rookie year, my captain my rookie year was Nolan Winemaster, so I got to play with the legend. That was a long time ago. So I got to play with Nolan at Briarcrest, uh, did three years there, took a year off, and then went back and finished um, my career at Briarcrest, so five years as a Clipper. And then I uh, got into coaching actually right after that. I did one year coaching some men in Calgary in, uh, in the, what was called the ACAL division, doesn't exist anymore, at St. Mary's University. And then opportunity opened up at Ambrose, and I've been now at Ambrose for, this is my eighth year. I've coached the, the women's volleyball program, this is my seventh year. Um, we've only been in the ACAC. This is our sixth year in the league, so coached a year in the ACAL, and then it's just been really fun to um, see the team into the ACAC. What would you say your coaching style might be? My coaching style, I, I think I bring my uh, very personal approach to my coaching. I, I, I care a lot about my players. I have a bit of a kind of a pastoral background, so I, I bring a, a caring nature, and I really I, th I think something I love to do and love to see in, in, in life and in people and in my players is try to see the good in, in people and in, and in players. So call out the good, empower them in the good things that I see in them athletically and personally and, uh, and bring that into my coaching. All right. Um, I asked Steve before about uh, any low points of the season. I'll ask you the opposite question. What are some of the highlights of your season so far? Some highlights? Um, well, I would say that I'm hoping that they are uh, still yet to come. Um, as everyone is down this table. Um, I think high points, um, you know, I, I feel like this year has this actually been a bit more of a grind. We've, we have, we've maybe not had as, as many of the highs as that we would, we would have hoped for. Um, we've, we, I think we've proven, we, we've had a lot of five setters this year. So 
I mean, one that's kind of a funny high point is we were down 8-1 in the fifth set. Uh, in our last match, we did 14 matches in the, in the fall semester. And our last match, kind of getting tired, it's into December. We were in a grind match. Sate was playing very well. And we, um, we were down 8-1 in the fifth set and found a way to come back down 14-11 or 14-10 and came back to win. So just finding a way, that's been something that we've just been doing this year is finding a way, finding a way. So that would be one little highlight. All right, uh, looking down the table here, is there any particular game that you're uh, looking forward to the most? Well, one o'clock tomorrow, Thursday, Ambrose versus King's University. That's obviously the, the one. Take that one for then and then uh, move on, on after that. All right, and finally, uh, what's the vibe like with the girls and, uh, and a little bit about uh, how excited they are to be in Medicine Hat? Yeah, we are extremely excited. We had the opportunity to host last year and be in, a, in a, the exciting environment. Uh, lost a very heartbreaking quarterfinal to um, Austin and the, the Lake, uh, Lakeland Rustlers, 16-14 in the fifth set. So we've, we've been in the quarterfinal the last two or three years and the last couple of years haven't got through it. So we're hungry. We're, we're uh, extremely hungry. We got a lot of respect for Kings and their team, but we are just very pumped to be here. All right, there you go. These are the coaches uh, from the 2020 Women's Volleyball ACAC Conference Championships action all weekend in Medicine Hat College. Uh, feel free to come and join us and uh, cheer on all of these amazing student athletes as they follow their dreams on the volleyball court. Thank you.